The sequence to sequence model brought a revolution to machine translation. In this paper review, we're going to look at one of those first papers that introduced the area of neural machine translation. Alrighty guys, so the paper we're going to look at is sequence to sequence learning with neural networks. Uh, reading papers isn't always the most exciting thing to do. But when you think about it, it is pretty darn cool. So the way I'm thinking about going through these papers is that I've highlighted the parts that I feel are the most important. And in that way, these videos will be sort of a long summary of the paper. So starting with the abstract, the, the biggest ideas that they mention here is that the power of these models is that they can actually map sequences to sequences of arbitrary length. So this ability to be able to map to arbitrary length is, you know, hugely important for machine translation, um, but a lot of other different things as well, like question answering, text summarization, and, and so on, where the length of the output isn't fixed, but can vary from example to example. So we're going to go more in depth in, later on in the paper of how these models work. But as we can see here, the, um, the blue score that they obtain from training this model is 34.8 and compare this to the uh, to phrase based uh, SMT systems which were used before you know these NMT neural machine translation systems it achieved a blue score of 33.3 .3. so the model outperformed the previous SMT systems uh, we can see here that it's only you know 1.5 blue point score higher but we really need to put this you know in perspective to really to really understand just of how, how impressive this result is. The first SMT or statistical machine translation systems were introduced during the 1990s and quickly took over the field of machine translation. Uh, and some of these SMT systems were uh, phrase-based, syntax-based, uh, or semantics-based. So in the paper, they compare it to phrase-based MT systems. Uh, and they work by essentially that they split the source sentence into words and then it translates each word, so it translates word by word, and then in the end, it wants to um, best fit together these translated words into a sentence. So sort of like a puzzle where you have all of these translated words, and you use these statistical models to, to decide which words should be put in what order. Then in 2007, uh, Google Translate was introduced, and in 2014, uh, the first neural machine translation paper was released. So one of them is is the one we're reading in this video, right? And uh, I just want to reiterate how big of a project these SMT systems was for Google. So they had hundreds of people working on these SMT systems, you know, probably um, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands lines of code. And then in 2016, Google announces that it's completely changing direction and has replaced their, their SMT system by a neural machine translation system. So, you know, imagine what they had been working on for over 10 years, if not even, if not longer than that, uh, probably 100,000, you know, lines of code replaced by a neural network, just probably a few hundred lines of code in just two years. So to put that into that context, this paper is insanely impressive and really shows the power of neural nets. They also found that reversing the order of the words in the source sentences, but not the target sentences, improved the LSTM's performance. So I guess they just um, reversed the sentence of the English word, uh, English sentence. Um, so reading other papers that were released after this one, uh, they didn't really use this anymore. I think this was just specific for this paper. So I'm not really going to put that much focus on reversing the sentences as it doesn't seem to be a strategy that, that continues um, uh, uh, with the newer papers. So moving on, uh, in the introduction here, they again emphasize this point that, you know, having a fixed dimensionality of the input and target is a significant limitation. And you know, in many cases, the most, so to say, since many important problems are best expressed with sequences whose length are not known a priori. Um, so I, this is the point we mentioned before. And uh, so here they bring up the idea that they can use two different LSTMs. 
and they would have one LSTM to read the input one time step at a time to obtain sort of a representation of the input and then they would send this to another LSTM and this LSTM would be responsible for extracting sort of an output translated text. And so here they have an image of this um, where they, you know, they, they input these uh, these uh, characters in this case, A, B, and C, and then they send in this to another part of an uh, another LSTM uh, where they start with inputting some token and then it starts the prediction. And then this prediction is mapped you know, to the input of the of the next LSTM cell. Um, I believe I also have another image of this. So in this image, we can sort of see the same thing in that we have an input, which is in this case is German text. And we start with the start token. Um, and then we have, you know, uh, the sentence in German. And then the, L the encoder, the first LSTM, which is called the encoder, uh, Ha, you know, creates this representation, this uh, context vector Z, which it then sends into the next LSTM. And this next LSTM is called the decoder, and it's going to start with, you know, the a start token, and then it's going to output the first predicted word, and this predicted word will then be the input to the next RNN cell. And it's going to continue making these predictions until it it predicts an end of token uh, which means that this is the end of the sentence. So then they say, you know, the, the main result is that they obtain a blue score of 34.8 and they use an, an ensemble of five deep LSTMs model uh, with 348 million parameters and 8,000 dimensional state each. And they also used a, a beam search decoder. And then, you know, they again emphasize this point that they reverse the order of the words and they believe this had some short, you know, introduced sh better short term dependencies. Uh, but yeah, we're not gonna, they, they really do mention that they believe this is a, you know, one of the key tricks that they use in this, in this paper. I'm, I'm, again, the newer papers don't use this trick that often, so I'm not gonna emphasize this point. So then they just have, they mentioned the RNN model and then, so I'm not going to focus on this too much, but essentially what, what, you know, what they're trying to say here is that the model works by, by, you know, having the input as well as the, all the previous predictions of all the words, it then wants to predict the, the, the next word with the highest probability. So. Um, that's just a theoretical justification for, for how the model uh, works. And then, you know, they, they say that, you know, training these deep LSTMs, um, uh, it, you know, is a very major point as well. And then also, you know, reversing the words seem to seem to work well for them in this paper. And then some, you know, they say some data set details in that they train the model, uh, you know, of they use a subset of 12 million sentences where they had 348 million French words and 304 English word. And then they also used, you know, the 160,000 most frequent word for the source and then 80,000 of the most frequent for the target language. And the, you know, the words that didn't fit the vocabulary was replaced with an unknown token. And then they just, uh, you know, the loss function that they used and also again explain that they use a beam search decoder, uh, which maintains a small number of B of partial hypotheses. So, you know, instead of just having one sentence that it's predicting, it's, I, mean, I guess it's a simplification, but it's, it has different, um, different sentences that could be possible. And then in the end, it chooses the one that it believes uh, is the best translation with the, you know, highest probability. But they also say that if you use a beam size of one, it also works pretty good. And then they talk, you know, more about the reversing of the source sentence and some training details in that they used LSTM with four layers, thousand cells at each layer and a thousand dimensional word embedding, uh, which is quite large, I think. And then they also used an input vocabulary of 160,000 and output of 80,000. And the... Uh, yeah, then they also have some, some you know, how they initialize the parameters, 
what the optimization they used, which they just used uh, SGD without momentum, uh, and um, and then they used uh, gradient clipping, and they also try to you know to avoid unnecessary padding. They try to match sentences in a batch that were of equal length, and that yielded some some speed up, and then some parallelization. They're doing a C++ implementation. This was before, you know, PyTorch and TensorFlow. So let's see if there's anything else that's important in this paper that I highlighted. Yeah, so I believe that was, you know, the, the most important parts. Um, you know, the conclusion is that, you know, they show that this architecture, which was, I guess, the most important of this paper, is that it can really, you know, do outperform the SMT systems and you know just show that NMT systems is probably the way to go in the future. So thank you so much for watching this paper review. Uh, in if you have any questions then leave them in the comment below. Um, and uh, you know we're gonna build on this paper. So in the next video I'm gonna do a an implementation of this paper. Not exactly but sort of having the general ideas of this paper and try to do our own implementation.